The Arabic word Islam means surrender. It is derived from the Arabic root word for peace, and as it is used in the Quran, the holy book of the religion of Islam, it means surrender to Allah or God. Thus the Muslim or follower of Islam is one who surrenders to God. Islam is said to be the world's fastest growing religion and is perhaps the religion most misunderstood by Westerners. One-fifth of the people on earth, more than one billion individuals who call themselves Muslims, have come to believe in the vision of God, of Allah, as set down by the Prophet Muhammad. The West often sees Islam as a religion of extremes and extremists, primarily as a result of the frequent conflicts that have arisen in the Middle East. In Iran, where Islam is the state religion, followers of other faiths have been persecuted in the past. In India, there have been frequent clashes between Hindus, with their belief in many deities, and Muslims, whose religion states, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. In Israel, there have been frequent outbursts of violence between Arab Muslims and Jews. While the extremists may represent the dark side of the faith, they are far from being its only side, and they involve only a very small percentage of Muslims. Islam is generally tolerant of other religions, particularly those that share a belief in one God. In fact, since Islam originated in the Middle East, at a later time than both Judaism and Christianity, there are many similarities between the three religions. Pristine Islam, the faith when it has not been corrupted by misinterpretation or by the desire for power or gain, is a religion based on the principle of peace and equality and of tolerance and understanding. It is a religion that provides spiritual and practical guidance for some of the richest and some of the poorest people on earth. If one is a conscious practicing Muslim, the whole of one's daily life is affected by one's practices and perhaps more importantly by one's awareness because um, a conscious Muslim will live with a constant awareness of responsibility to God and of the fact that this life is not a, a, a permanent place to be. We're going on from this life to another life and that's what we're aspiring for and we're hoping to do something during the course of our life day by day, hour by hour, that will please our Lord and bring us closer to Him and um, will guarantee us some sort of a satisfactory position in the next life. Many of the laws and customs of Islam seem strange to the Westerner. To some, the law of prayer five times a day and the month of fasting at Ramadan may seem extreme. We have five daily prayers and we build our life around those five daily prayers, no matter we are, whether we are traveling or playing or doing something else. And the time for, pray, for prayer comes, so we take that time off and connect ourselves with the Creator and remind ourselves so that we are never forgetful of the Creator. To others, the custom of purda, the veiling of women practiced in some communities, may offend the Western sense of freedom and equality. A lot of misconceptions, a lot of um, misunderstandings about women's places in Islam. And one of the problems is, especially in some of the Middle Eastern countries, um, the status of women has been influenced by culture. So what we in America see as women's status is more of women's status in that culture um, rather than in the religion. The hijab, which is um, the covering for women in Islam, is um, 
I believe both a practical and spiritual uh, consideration. There is a verse in the Quran um, where God instructs the prophet to tell his wives uh, that they should cover so that they could be known but not abused. While Westerners follow secular-based laws, for the Muslim, obedience to the religious-based law of Islam gives a sense of oneness with a more powerful and sacred force and provides an important balance for the increasingly materialistic culture of the modern world. In America, where it's so easy to do what's best for you, I have to remember that, you know, every year I have to give charity out of my savings. Every year I fast and I know what it's like to be thirsty and hungry and not be able to eat. It teaches you compassion. It helps you to understand that you need to reach out to people, that it's not all about you, it's about everyone. Um, and I do think that Islam provides that balance. Today, Islamic nations have far-reaching military, economic, and political power. Some Islamic countries and their leaders have challenged the greatest powers on earth, and turmoil and wars in the Middle East have created feelings of insecurity and anger throughout the world. But who bears responsibility for these problems? The answers are not simple ones and they have their roots in hundreds of years of history. Islam is the youngest of the world's great religions and has drawn followers from all over the world, as illustrated by this mosque in Washington, D.C. Muslims, the followers of Islam, believe in a single, all-powerful God, whom they call Allah, literally the strong, the mighty, or the powerful. They believe that Muhammad, the founder of Islam, was not a savior or a messiah. Rather, Muhammad was simply a man, a man through whom God spoke and delivered the text of the holiest book in Islam, the Quran. Muhammadanism, as Islam is sometimes called, is an inaccurate term and offends the spirit of the religion, since Muslims do not worship Muhammad. They believe that Muhammad was the last in a line of prophets, which includes Jesus and Abraham, the father of Judaism. They do not believe in the divinity of any of these prophets. The central belief of Islam is that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. The word Islam means submission to God's will. A Muslim is one who submits to that will keeping God in mind at all times. The devout Muslim spends much time in contact with God through prayer, repeating, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet, before each prayer. The belief that God is all-powerful and all-knowing creates a sense of community for Muslims that reaches beyond political and racial barriers, uniting Muslims throughout the world. Islam is a humane faith as much concerned with a person's life on earth as in the hereafter. The Quran is similar to the Bible of the Christians and Jews in that it provides a code by which to live life on earth in order to assure a place in heaven. Like Judaism and Christianity, Islam teaches of a final judgment day when Allah will assign the souls of the dead to either heaven or hell depending on their deeds in their earthly lives. It dictates that followers shall care for those less fortunate than themselves by giving alms to the poor. It forbids the lending of money for profit. It sets out rules governing family and business. The Quran provides guidance for every phase of a Muslim's life. Muhammad was born in 570 CE in Mecca, a city in Saudi Arabia, which today is the center of Islam. At that time, Mecca was a prosperous trading and religious center for tribes of Arabic-speaking people. Muhammad was orphaned at a young age and was raised by an uncle who had many children and was an impoverished trader. As Muhammad grew up, he accompanied his uncle on his travels. At this time, he developed a dislike for the traditional idol worship of the tribe's people. At the same time, he encountered and grew to respect Jews and Christians who worshipped one God. 
According to Islamic tradition, one night when Muhammad was forty years old, he was meditating on Mount Hira near Mecca. He had a vision of the archangel Gabriel who commanded, Muhammad, recite, You are the messenger of God. As a result of these instructions, Muhammad revealed the beginnings of the Quran. Since he could not write, he communicated the teachings orally to all who would listen. Muhammad's revelations continued for the next 23 years, starting a religion that would change the course of history. Muhammad would often stand in the streets, reciting line after line of God's message to him. The people of Mecca worship idols and did not like the fact that he denounced their long-held traditions and threatened to take his life. In 622 CE, he fled to a more tolerant city to the north, now called Medina, the city of the prophet. During his ten years at Medina, Muhammad laid the foundations of Islam, a religion that today is followed by one out of every five people on earth. Several years later, in 630 CE, he led 10,000 of his followers back to Mecca, which was captured with very little resistance. Mecca became the religious center for Muslims worldwide. Two years after this, in the last year of his life, 632 CE, Muhammad led a great pilgrimage to Mecca. In his final speech to the Muslim community, he urged kindness and respect toward others, especially women. There's a saying of the Prophet where uh, someone came to him and said, I want to give charity, but I don't have any money. And the Prophet said, you know, then do something for them. And he said, what if I can't? He said, then smile. Even a smile is a form of worship. It's charity. You know, you are giving someone some portion of happiness. Um, and I find that that kind of uh, philosophy on life just amazing. And the prophet is, is truly a role model. His life is an example for all Muslims everywhere. Muhammad died shortly after this and was buried in Medina. After his death, his disciples took on the enormous task of writing down Muhammad's words in Arabic thereby creating the first written form of the Quran, Islam's holiest text. Following the death of Muhammad, the Arabs began to conquer and convert the countries around them. Within three years, from 636 to 639 CE, Palestine and Iraq, Syria, Mesopotamia, and Egypt all fell to Muslim conquerors. Generally, the conquerors were tolerant of existing religions, particularly the monotheistic Judaism and Christianity, and did not force Islam on their subjects. From this time onward, the faith and its influence spread rapidly, and in less than 50 years, half of the known civilized world, from Spain to the borders of China, was in the hands of Muslims. In the 9th, 10th, and 11th centuries, art, architecture, and science flourished in centers of Islamic culture. Drawing on the diverse art forms of the land conquered, a truly brilliant civilization developed. The faith continued to be spread all across Asia and to the islands of Indonesia by wandering Sufis, the mystics of Islam, and by Arab traders who brought their religion as well as their goods to distant lands. Sometimes the traders would marry local women and then have their children brought up as Muslims. In this way, Islam continued its spread. There are two main sects in the religion of Islam. Ninety percent of all Muslims belong to the group known as Sunnis. Most of the remaining ten percent are Shiites. While these two groups were both born during the very earliest period of Islamic history and share all of the basic beliefs of Islam, they differ over the choice of caliph or successor to Muhammad as leader of the Islamic community. The Sunnis believe that the honor should go to an elected member of the tribe of Muhammad. The Shiites believe that the position is God-given only to descendants of Muhammad. 
Since Muhammad had no sons that lived, Shiites believe the lineage descends through his son-in-law, Ali. In addition to the two major sects, there are a number of very small subgroups. Among these are Sufis, or dervishes, the mystics of Islam, who originated in the first generation of Muhammad's followers. Another subgroup is the black Muslims. The term black Muslim usually refers to the organization called the World Community of Islam in the West, originally the Nation of Islam, headed by its prophet Elijah Muhammad. In the U.S., the black Muslims are a sect which combines the tenets of Islam with black nationalism, the desire for a black homeland. While relatively small in number, they have focused on education, economics, and political aspirations in the black community. The life of all Muslims, whether Sunni or Shiite, is governed by five main principles called the five pillars of Islam. The first pillar is expressed in the creed, there is no God but Allah, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. The second pillar of faith is prayer, which is performed at five specified times each day while facing toward Mecca. The third pillar is almsgiving. This consists of supporting the poor of the community, giving to the support of mosques and for religious training. It is believed that these acts of generosity purify one's personal wealth. The fourth pillar is the fast of Ramadan. During this month, which celebrates Muhammad's first revelation, the faithful do not eat from sunrise to sunset each day. The fifth pillar of faith is the Hajj, the pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia, which only Muslims can enter. It is very important for devout Muslims to attempt to make the pilgrimage to Mecca at least once during their lifetime, no matter where they live. Here they perform certain prescribed rituals, such as wearing the pilgrim's white seamless garment, which symbolizes the equality of all Muslims. While in Mecca, there is no visible difference between Muslims from different nations or from different social or economic groups. Their common religious purpose dissolves any distinctions between them. They relate to each other as equals, all seekers of God. You feel, you know, you're one of this uh, whole world, the world full of people there. There may be kings, there may be uh, professors, there are doctors, engineers, and ordinary people, they are uh, uneducated, illiterate. And they are all have one purpose there, to stand in front of God as one to one, one to one. There is nobody in between you and your God. The Kaaba, an ancient holy place, which Muhammad captured from Arab pagans and dedicated to Allah, is the holiest shrine of Islam. The Kaaba is draped in a sacred carpet, the Kizwa, which is renewed each year. Pilgrims walk seven times around the Kaaba and kiss the black stone mounted in its corner as a sign of their devotion. For Muslims, there is no greater joy than who have completed the Hajj. This pilgrimage to Mecca is considered to be their life's most sacred duty. The five pillars of Islam give support to the lives of the followers of Islam and provide regular practices through which religion becomes part of daily life. The word mosque means place of prostration, a place to humble oneself before God. The mosque has no religious focal point other than the mihrab or niche, which indicates the direction of Mecca, and thus the direction the faithful should face while praying. It has no furnishings except for prayer mats or rugs. There is no formal clergy in Islam no person to stand between the worshiper and God. Hypothetically, any Muslim could lead prayers. However, it is usually the leader of the mosque or imam who teaches and conducts the services. Mosques are more than just places of worship. They serve as community centers. Here in Ajmer, India, tea is made for the more than 2,000 people who are fed at the mosque each day. 
Often, schools are found in mosques. Students use the Quran as a standard text for many subjects, since it is considered to be the supreme authority on law, science, and the humanities, as well as on religion. Much can be learned of the traditions of Islam by examining some of its rich artistic heritage. Islamic art grew from the blend of ideas which came from many cultures which were absorbed during centuries of conquest. However, the influence of the religion, which is the most important of all of the elements in Islamic art, always predominates above all else. One of the expressions of Islamic art is seen in the Arabic language itself. Until the time of the Prophet Muhammad, Arabic was primarily a spoken language and was seldom written down. But then the Quran, the Word of God, was revealed and was written down in this language. In order to read the Quran, the faithful had to learn to read Arabic. In this way, the language spread with the religion. Since Arabic is the sacred language of the Quran, the Word of God, its script is treated as a visual art of the highest order. Calligraphy, literally beautiful writing, is used in the decoration of the interiors and exteriors of buildings, especially mosques. The visual beauty of the verses from the Quran, written in calligraphy, makes any additional pictorial decoration seem unnecessary. However, the loveliest use of calligraphy is reserved for the Quran itself. In much of the Islamic world, pictorial painting generally was and is reserved for representing non-religious themes. When painting religious scenes, the face of the Prophet, in particular, is never painted in, and Allah is never portrayed. Islam wanted to eliminate all kind of, you know, this kind of thing so that people may concentrate on God. Now, God has no form. We cannot imagine him as a human being or anything. So the emphasis became more abstract. The emphasis changed from pictorial representation or emphasis on human beings to more abstraction. You know so that the infinity of God is represented. Many Muslims believe that the pictorial representation of the human form, and even of animals, is trespassing upon the realm of Allah. Islamic art tends toward geometric patterns and delicate tracery, as seen on this pierced stone screen, and the decoration on this page of the Quran. This is in marked contrast to Buddhism and Christianity which both developed strong traditions of representation in religious art. While there is a wealth of beautiful painting that has come from Islamic masters, Muslim artists also created elegant works in other media, such as pottery, glasswork, metalwork, jewelry, and textiles. All were forms of art which were highly developed in the Islamic culture. Perhaps the strongest form of Islamic expression is found in its architecture. From the great mosques to the palaces and tombs of the Mughal rulers of India, Islamic architecture ranks among the finest in the world. The best known of these works, the Taj Mahal, is perhaps the most famous building in the world. Built as a tomb for the wife of Shah Jahan in 1629, it is a masterwork of masons, jewelers, and calligraphers. During the 18th and 19th centuries, there were large declines in the political and military fortunes of Islamic society. By 1850, Europeans dominated all three of the great Muslim empires, the Ottoman in Turkey, the Mughal in India, and the Persian in Iran. The Renaissance, the discovery of the New World, and the Industrial Revolution combined to give Europe the strength to bring much of the Islamic world under its influence. This colonial domination caused a great crisis in the Islamic world. During this time, Muslims began to doubt the power of their faith and their place in the world. 
the British and the French were in control of Egypt and North Africa, areas which were very steeped in the Islamic religion, its culture, and tradition. The British established themselves in southern Arabia and the Persian Gulf to protect the trade route to India. The Dutch controlled Indonesia, and the British held Singapore. The situation was intolerable to people who for so long had been the proud rulers of so much of the world. By the end of the 19th century, an Islamic renaissance had begun. It did not gain much momentum until the period between World Wars I and II. After World War II, one previously colonized country after another achieved independence. And today the colonial system has disappeared from the Islamic world. In spite of this, some of the resentment and anger against the West found in Islamic countries dates from the colonial era, and wars continue to break out in the name of protecting the religious beliefs and culture of the Islamic nations. Islam has had a great influence on the world from the earliest days of the faith. Because it has met the spiritual needs of so many people from all walks of life, it has spread rapidly over a large part of the globe. The areas where Islam is strongest are also the areas that are experiencing the fastest population growth. As this trend continues, Islam is destined to grow and to have an ever greater influence on the world and its people. أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الْمَلَأِ مِنْ بَنِي 